Dean Klaus has an art show going on in Paris right now. If you can't make it there, good news, I got my hands on the catalog. Let's check that out. Hello and welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Want to remind all of our new viewers that we are a daily comic book YouTube channel, over 1,700 videos in our back catalog, and you can search by creator, comic book title, uh, favorite character on our YouTube homepage, and find a video that I'm sure you'll be happy with. I also want to let everybody know we have a Patreon, Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon, three different levels, get access to our videos early, and at the King Kayfaber level, sit in on our recording sessions. Uh, very awesome. That means you'll get to see the books before anybody else does. And if you want to add them to your collection, you'll be able to do it while the prices are low and they're still available. Some of the stuff we look at, it definitely disappears or it goes up in value. So check out the Patreon at the links below this video to help us keep the lights on. Ed, it's no secret I love Dan Klaus's work. He's got a show up in Paris right now. I believe it's Gallery Martel. And um, they have a catalog. So you can order this online. That's how uh, a, a kayfaber sent me a link to it. I would not have known this existed. And I don't have that person's name in front of me. And I'm sorry because I'm very grateful that, it, that they sent me this link. And you also doesn't cross your mind to go, hey, Ed could use this link also to, <laughs> to, to get a copy. I thought you were copied on the message, to be honest. But uh, I, I will dig that one out and send it to you. And, and maybe we'll post that underneath this video as well for uh, other people that want to join it. Give you a sense of scale. Here's a co standard comic book size, so a little bit wider than a comic, not quite as tall, but a nice size is, is what I'm saying there. And it came with a fold out of a double sided print of the back cover of Monica, kind of moving it around because this is very large, about yeah. eight folds there, and a rough of the cover of Monica. And very interesting to me, you can see, like, I don't know if it's showing up on there, but a little bit of pencil on there, you know, yeah. so. Really interesting to see these kinds of preparatory drawings. Like, even up here in the lettering, I can't tell, is it, is he using like a gray marker in a, in, or an ink wash, you know, because you can see how the ink is a different density in certain spots. No idea what that is. Maybe switched ink partway through this thing. Maybe the next day opened up a fresh bottle or something, but kind of weird. But I like seeing these kinds of sketches to see like, What's he working out? You know, what details is he trying to figure out on this? And that's what this catalog is. It is comprised primarily of sketches and, you know, preparatory materials for the book. There is an intro in three different languages, including English, which is nice. You're not always going to uh, be sure of that. You know, I have several art books where they're not in English. Right. So it's, it's nice to get a little bit of uh, whatever text does accompany this. I can read it. Um, you know, criticism I have with some of these great art books that I pick up that are beautiful to look at. I want so badly to know what they say. The Richard Corbin Angoulême book comes to mind, you know. Right. Um, so, you know, dive right in. And as I said, this is all preparatory material. I say that. And then you look at this and think, like, how is this a sketch? Right. You know, it's so detailed and the art's so ornamental. But again, like he's working this stuff out. And I think it's part of how you get to that final ink line. It yeah. still looks pretty quick, you know, somewhat spontaneous. And it's something that inkers often talk about how hard it is to retain that. And I think one way you retain it is you work out your questions in these sketches. And then when it's time to do the final, you know, you kind of know the answer and you're able to maybe apply that ink in a way you want. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think back to um, a video we shot with Brian Moss, where he was showing us a piece of uh, Toth original art he had. And uh, the, the back part of it had two ink drawings on both sides, yes. uh, ink drawing on both sides. And you could tell which one was the first one and the, and the one that was finally used because he's, it's about reduction yes. and, cl and clarity. And so like that one, I, I know that New Yorker cover and I know what it, that final piece looks like. And he's, he's, he's cutting stuff down. He's making, he's making reductive decisions. Yeah. And we talked off air a little bit that this stuff to me feels like a translucent, I don't know if it's a vellum, a tracing paper or something like that. But a lot of this art has that quality to it. Yeah. And, uh, and you saw some of this in person and yes. can confirm that a lot of it, ha you know, is that vellum or tracing paper, right. something like that. And it makes sense if you're doing iterations that you would be able to like, okay, put this over the drawing. Let me keep the parts that I know work. And you do that kind of quickly and you'll see like variations of the same piece in here. And I think that's proof of, okay, you know, it's a, it's a quick way to kind of go over it, retain the stuff you want, change the others. It's interesting too, because he, he, he doesn't, he's doing this for himself. Like when you're supplying roughs and things to, um, 
an art director, they never require you to like do that much drawing in like a thumbnail piece. And he's like the Monica stuff that we were looking at. It's not like Gary Groth is going to be like, you know, I need to see some roughs ahead of time. You know, you're, 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 you're an X factor in this enterprise. Like, I don't know what you're going to deliver us. Like Klaus did this for himself to, to get as close to the final printed version. Uh, he, decide on colors and things. Does this magenta make sense uh, amongst the, the red and the blue? Like, yeah, I agree 100%, and I think it speaks to part of why I hold Klaus above most cartoonists. Sure. You know, because he wants that degree of specificity, and I think that's the only way you get it is to actually do this level of, like, working out the details. The other takeaway I have from looking at this art is I it wouldn't I, I would be excited if Klaus did a book that was finished to this state because... I don't know, man. It seems like all the information is here. Totally. It looks really uh, uh, interesting to me. I like the color pencil, the texture and stuff, but even like the inking, I feel like I'm pretty happy with that. I yeah. think it'd be cool to see maybe like some throwaway genre pulpy thing. I don't know if he would ever do anything that'd be a throwaway genre pulpy thing, but it works for me. Like I think me too. I'd be excited to see a complete comic in this form yeah it makes me think of like whenever i worked with uh with jay lynch another chicago chicago cartoonist by the way uh and jay sent me these like these what he called roughs and i would just like tell him like jay just just publish these yes. he's like no like like i you know these need to be translated into bigger boards and all that stuff and i'm like i'll be i'll be your guy you know i'm new to the game this is my first uh opportunity so i'll take it but you don't need me for shit man i wonder whenever i look at something like this a very a very detailed color study. Do you think he does some of this stuff digitally? Because in my mind, you could flat these colors and then change them very, very quickly if you're just trying to figure out like, oh, should she have a red mask? Maybe she should have a blue mask, a green mask. You know what I mean? Like you could just flip those colors so quick. Whereas in color pencil, I love how this looks. Right. But it's pretty time consuming. You know, even like some of your, uh, like a gouache or something that you could water down and slap on quickly or markers. I think all of those would be quicker than a colored pencil. Again, love how this looks. And I think maybe that aesthetic quality is part of it because then you do get to put this on a gallery wall. Yeah, and I think it's it's not a, it's not about speed. It's not, it's not about that. It's like, what did you get in this for? And like, I will probably never produce a comic drawn digitally because I want to fucking fill that ink on paper. And he's a generation removed. So sure, he could do that. But, but I think... You know, there were those comic art magazines and stuff where he's drawing those fake eight ball covers with like the uh, Italian photographer with the little box thing and all that. That appeared nowhere else. You know, it's just a sketchbook thing. So it's just just part of his process. It's super cool to see something like this where you're adapting the coloring process of Ghost World, but in color pencils. Right. So you get to see some of the variations and things. But I mean, like drawing wise, it would not surprise me. If people are out there and look at this and say, I actually pr prefer this version to the inked version, because I've seen him criticized for being a little bit cold in the precision of his inking. And I think he's loosened up and it's, and it's warmed up consequently. But then I see like this and I think that's absolutely fantastic in my opinion. You know, it's noteworthy and it's like, you know what, you do it. Like, like I'm interested in that. You know, I got a whole big old set of Prisma colors that, that I just bought. And, I, and I, I tested some stuff out, like with uh, that Switchblade Shorties like, comic that was in the back of the Red Room. Let's see what marker and color pencil look like. I like the results. So I intend on playing with uh, color pencil and things. And, and you, you don't even have to ink. You know, the, the ink, it's, it's a, that's a vestige of, Absolutely. of print from, from the 20th century. Yeah, it really is. You don't even need to ink. This video is brought to you by the comics that we make. Switchblade Shorties now appearing on the cartoonist Kayfabe and Ed Piscor social media every day. Hip Hop Family Tree, The Omnibus, Red Room, Crypto Killers, Anti-Social Network, and Trigger Warnings, and X-Men Grand Design Trade Paperback. Street Angel, Princess of Poverty, Street Angel, Deadly Girl Alive, True Crime Funnies, BW Zine, 1986 Zine, and Hulk Grand Design. And now back to the video. I was uh, I, I wasn't sure what to expect from this catalog either. Like I wasn't didn't know what the art show is, and I think this is not comprehensive. The art show, I believe, has some a lot of other stuff too. But I feel like whoever decided to put this together this way, man, hats off, because this is a bunch of work that you would see like one or two of these somewhere, you know, like yeah. in a comic art magazine. Really cool to see them all together like this. And this is the example I was saying of like 
you know, I think he's working over, although there's actually quite a bit of variation here. I mean, it's different drawings. You know, these, it's completely these two guys, different. Different drawings, but some elements, you know, contained. I also like seeing him do this kind of cartoon shorthand for things like buildings. Yeah. Because it's even a different shorthand. He does cartooning of, of things like buildings, you know, in his finished ink work. This is yet a different version. Almost, right. almost Seth-like. Sure. Some of these choices. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because, like, this is the stuff that he would that he would just keep private and, and maybe even throw away. Like when we were, um, I think, I think it, see, this is so much material. And what I remember when I went to the patients show in, in Paris, I'm trying to imagine if it's the same place because it didn't feel like the biggest place. And I don't know that it could support like this level, this amount of stuff. I remember there being maybe like 30, 40 pieces. Okay. Uh, so, so, um, but like what was there really was just, sharpie on tracing paper and stuff and he's like yeah this is literally the stuff that alvin buenaventura would take out of my waste basket and said that like i needed to preserve and, and hold on to and he sent them shits for like twenty thousand euros can you imagine i mean this this may be more refined it but, is but, yeah but, but something even like less refined than this but still how good it is to just be like yeah throw it away right. this is like third iteration for my final so who needs it yeah, yeah, good good on Alvin, man. That's one more like Alvin saint of comics for him pulling this out. Hey, have you ever seen Shock Corridor? No, but you told me about that that opening the sequence opening and I scene, dude. See it real bad. Very very worthwhile. I have it. I have every criterion in some bootleg fashion for sure. This is a wild drawing. That girl was saying that. hamburger. <laughs> it almost looks like one of the caricaturist uh, caricatures. If it you really, know what I'm saying. it really does. That or maybe a ventriloquist. Like that. <laughs> yeah, he's got his hand uh, deep inside. <laughs> Make her talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody at home, go watch the opening scene of Shock Corridor. It's uh, it's something. Here's one of the uh, the back cover for Monica, and even the spine he's working out. Sure. You know, and the spine is really close to yeah. to like logo and stuff. You know, like these are far along whenever he's doing these color studies. It reminds me of we have a video of Steve Rude's sketchbook, and there's a lot in Steve Rude's sketchbook where he does color studies. Right, and they're. Uh, yeah, you know, you're right. For people that are only work digital, it is well worth like checking out some of these color studies that people would do to try to figure that out where you're doing, you know, eight or 10 of them on a page quickly, but just to get a sense of like, this is the palette for it. Right. Because it is a different, it is a different uh, experience than looking at it on a screen. And then he has the experience with print, knowing that like, okay, I'm playing with this color. Uh, I got to make sure there's no yellow in the, in the cyan mixture. So that it, she's not green on the cover. So I'm pretty sure. I'll hold you know this. what? This is actually this is the the piece that's blown up. Okay. And the way you can see it is the ink, the weird consistency of the ink is the same on here, of being like super dark and then it gets light and I can't figure that out. Yeah. It's very peculiar to me. Yeah, I don't know. He must have. Um, I used to run multiple bottles of ink and maybe he does that. You know, I would use it for different tools. Like one worked better to me in pen nibs, you know, it was thinner or thicker right. or one worked better in brush. So it's possible he has something like that and, you know, he's just grabbing whatever's there. Like I say, using up maybe the, the end of one bottle and, and it's a little bit thicker. And then here is your checklist of what is included. And then the biography. You know what? It, it, it's 20 pieces. Like this absolutely could could be the same place that we went to. It was, it was uh, run by uh, Lorenzo Matodi's wife. Uh, sort of runs the gallery. And it was one of the greatest comic going experiences I, like, I've ever had. Like being in the game. Because we went to his little show. And then we went like across the street. Is where Matodi and the, the lady live. And it was this big giant building, right? And it's an apartment. And there's like a main stairway. And so, like, on the, maybe, like, the right is, like, three floors of apartments that are rented to tenants, you know? And on the right, we, we I mean, on the left, you just go in this door, and they have three floors of space and have, like, a big old loft with, like, banisters going all up the, like, they, they have, the whole left is yeah. them, and then it's tenants on the right, and it was the most bougie, like, they had... Italian, like they had a pasta flown in from Italy for dinner that night. It was the shit. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. So this is the other publications. Some interesting stuff on here. This Chris Ware, Rusty Brown theme song. I considered buying this. The other catalogs from the publisher that did this catalog. And if you look, it's like 200 pages or something. And it seems like it's blown up Chris Ware color images from Rusty Brown. Um, 
it just seemed like beautiful from the couple of sample pages yeah, because they were like edition full bleeds and but I couldn't tell exactly what it was and there wasn't quite enough sample so I didn't end up picking that one up but some interesting stuff Gary Panter you know some some different uh, cartoonists that we recognize and know uh, as well as a lot of international cartoonists so I was uh, pretty happy to be able to get my hands on this even that it exists is uh, is fantastic and then I can't imagine better stuff to put in here because, you know, even if it were originals, we have an artist edition. So I've seen, I've had a chance to really look at some of his original art or at least good reproductions of it. This is a little bit different and really gives me some food for thought. To your point, like, you don't make masterpieces. No editor requires this degree of quality. You know, I always say, like, I'm harder than any editor I work for. And you should be. And, and Klaus, clearly harder than any editor or art director uh, you know, he is on himself. Mm -hmm. And that's the result is you get like a top, top level cartoonist because clearly he's pushing himself to that level. It does make me wonder what his roughs and things like maybe when he's younger and less financially secure, I wonder how he was working through that stuff. If it was, you know, maybe a different process back then, whenever it's like, hey, get that eight ball cover together. Right. When when it's his own work, I, 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 I think he's still taking that same level of uh, attention and, and, and craft because I remember in some of those early interviews he was talking about, and it probably was stuff like, if you think about the splash pages and things for um for like a velvet glove, the symmetry of the faces, where he's talking about like laying out his pages on, on a graph paper so that like none of the faces are askew, getting perfect symmetry of all the faces so that, you know, things are aligned properly and all that kind of stuff. So So I think he's... You see it in the work. It's always been meticulous. Yeah. It, it's pretty cool that we get these kinds of records for some of these artists Absolutely. where we can kind of watch them evolving too because, you know, it's some of what they write about in here is just like from going from like 8 Ball 1, you know, and whenever that is, 88 or 89, something like that, to where he is now. I start reading him in about 99, and it's weird to think that like the majority of his creative time now I've been reading his work. Right. You know, so... It's a guy that has really evolved a lot. You would think pick up an issue of, you know, 8 Ball 13 or something, and you go, oh, he's in his mature phase. And it's kind of like, no. You know, like, honestly, his mature phase, maybe Ice Haven it starts some, somewhere in there. So, fascinating artist, pretty good object here, and I believe they're still available if people at home are interested in this. I'll try to find that link and uh, slip it your way, Ed. Yeah, give yeah. You, I will... Give you a window to track one down, and then uh, Bef... then we'll put it underneath the video. Before you get home, <laughs> if I get that link, I'm, oh, I will order and secure my copies. Good to go? Yes. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos are available. We're getting close to 100,000 subscribers. If you haven't done so, man, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit whatever extra buttons are required for you to get delivered these uh, videos so that you could be one of the earliest people on Gen Pop to get your hands on uh, the stuff that we're talking about. Uh, that'll mitigate the kayfabe effect to some extent. But if you want to get these videos before anybody else... You gotta become a uh, patron on our Patreon. Uh, the King K Fibers get all the vids, and they uh, are able to kick it with us in this live stream chat room as we record uh, the week's videos, which uh, provides a lot of uh, extra value to the uh, K Fibers out there. Ultimately, though, the videos are brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy, let the people know what you have. I have the 1986 zine and the BW zine. These have been out of print for a while. I sent a reprint out. They should be back March 6th. They are going to be up for sale on my website. So if you missed them, they are coming back along with True Crime Funnies, my uh, collection of nonfiction short stories. And uh, I've actually finished the second drawing, the second chapter in my George White story. And that is available right now on my Patreon. You can see the original art from that one. If you're not a member, you see it as soon as you join street angel deadly scroll live and princess of poverty both available and in print from image comics these are both self-contained read them in any order and uh probably about 20 stories total of the homeless ninja on a skateboard and hulk grand design treasury edition sold out trade paperback available for pre-orders now so if you have not picked that up yet do so now let marvel know they need to keep these books in print the Switchblade Shorties Daily Strip has been going on for uh, since January 1st. It's on all of my social media. It's on Webtoon. It's on the Kayfabe social media streams, man. So 
check out uh, my latest comics project. I'm almost actually done uh, drawing the first book. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is out there. Uh, you can find it real cheap on Amazon right now. It's like 45 bucks up there, which is crazy. Uh, this is the best book I've made to date. Contains all of my Hip Hop Family Tree works, plus 150 pages of extras. Scoop that thing up sooner than later. Uh, there are three flavors of Red Room trade paperbacks. Uh, the newest one coming at the end of February is called Crypto Killers. Uh, each one contains four complete stories. You don't need one to enjoy the other. So if Crypto Killers is your entryway, uh, no problem. And check it out if you dig it. Then go back and uh, read some of the other stories. And then there is the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy, which contains all of my uh, my X-Men Grand Design work. Some of that stuff is out, is out of print. The books are absolutely the most important thing required to keep the channel going. But there are some other ways to support the channel. Jimmy, let the people know. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also pick up Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. There you have it, man. Numerous ways to keep the channel rocking. Give them those marching orders, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Read more comics.